Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the information session for the Peer Impact Networks. Um, we thought we would um, get you together and answer a lot of the questions that you had because uh, we had a lot of interest, uh, but there's also a lot of questions associated. So we thought this is an opportunity for people to meet the facilitators, ask their questions, um, and learn more about what we plan to do with the Peer Impact Networks. I apologize for any background noise happening um, in uh, my Zoom. Uh, so the Peer Impact Networks were actually a request by our members. Um, we noticed that a lot of the members are going through challenges uh, by themselves and um, sustainability offices in certain companies were working on the same issues, um, but wanted more um, information or learning. And our mission is to convene uh, and connect. So we created these um, basically to allow people to connect, convene, and inspire action. Um, these will be member-only peer-driven um, groups we hope that they will drive transformation across your organization. Uh, we hope that you are able to talk to people in a deeper way and share knowledge, share tools um, with your connection. We want uh, to make this a way to emphasize collective action, cross-sector um, collaboration. We want you personally to expand your network and have access to potential partners that you did not think uh, to connect with in the first place and uh, gain knowledge. So with that in mind, I know a lot of people were interested in attending but could not attend live, registered to get the recording. But with the few people that we have here, if you could just share what um, industry you guys uh, are coming from It'd be nice to see um, where, um, what industry you are um, approaching, because we are going to curate or working with we, uh, these groups and hope to make it meaningful for you and um, worth your time, basically. So uh, go ahead and type in chat what kind of industry. Financial services, fleet management, grocery, wholesale throughout New England. Yes. Uh, supply chain, assistance, innovation, nonprofits. Uh, and we're looking, yeah, at similar sizes. We had requests to uh, make sure that um, members of the group were of similar size, of similar interest. So we want to make sure that when we curate the group, um, that you are facing uh, similar challenges and similar um, interests. So, and one more um, ask of you. Um, if you share a topic that is top of mind to you um, right now in your field, something, a challenge that you're facing or a topic that is critical for you to deal with. Um, and you can respond to this by going to pollev.com and HBSR, or um, you can join by text or the QR code. And I'll start sharing responses to see It should show. I was able to type my name in, but I wasn't able to answer the question. I don't um, think that it's launching the... Um, okay, well, let's do it in chat. We're a small enough group <laughs> that we can do it in chat then. And I'll read them out. Um, Um, 
topics, top of mind, things that we should be um, thinking about for uh, the topics of discussion, challenges that you're facing in your industry or profession right now? Um, Oh, that's a big one, Jordan. Implications of California Climate Disclosure Bill. Staffing and funding, that's a big one for New Hampshire specifically. Retention and employee burnout, yes. So we have two groups here, and this is it's evident. Uh, one is environmental sustainability and one is HR, carbon footprinting, yes. Yeah. Uh, Yes, and this is, is, it's difficult when it's done alone, especially when it um, becomes more important to go to scope three, Shay, yes. So you would need more and more support and help in that approach. Um, okay, and with that introduction, I'm gonna go deeper into the logistics of how we meet, when we meet, all that. But before we do, these are facilitated talks and we want to make sure that we are providing um, uh, um, a meaningful interaction for you, an in-depth interaction. So we um, asked our facilitators to um, manage each group um, hopefully in the long run, it could be self-managed, but initially we want to make sure we establish the ground rules and that it's driven by the group. Uh, so Erin Allgood uh, from Allgood Strategies is going to be our environmental sustainability peer group facilitator. And Trini Hutton from Ripple Effect Studio is going to be our human resource peer group facilitator. And I will allow them uh, to introduce themselves, give you a little bit of background um, and how they hope to manage these. And we'll start with Erin uh, and we'll put the detailed uh, bio in the chat. Yeah, um, it's great to meet all of you here today. Um, I'm Erin Allgood. I use she, her, hers pronouns. Um, and like Zena said, my business is All Good Strategies. I work with organizations who give a damn to create real impact. And so what that means is that I help folks really start to understand their vision and strategy for social impact, sustainability, and um, help them to figure out the roadmap to get there. Um, I deeply, deeply love talking about sustainability and facilitating um, conversations around some of these big questions. And so that's why I'm so excited to be doing this doing this work. Um, and so I will, the way that I will approach, you know, this, these peer impact networks is just to really be able to foster um, a lot of camaraderie amongst the folks who are participating, really build that trust amongst one another. And so that we can really be able to dive deep into some of the conversations around the topics that are um, really front and center right now in sustainability. And um, and so I'm really excited about all of that. And please, you know, as as we go into um, as we go throughout this you know session today, please feel free to ask me any questions um, and related to that. I'll hand it over to Trini. Thanks so much, Erin, and hello, everybody. I'm Trini Houghton. Um, I am CEO of Ripple Effect Studio, and that is a, a leadership and team um, coaching outfit in Manchester. My husband, Scott and I, uh, for many, many years of team coaching, uh, really wanted to open our own space to have people and teams in. And so we've uh, created this labor of love and, um, and, and really the work that I've done in um, organizations is a labor of love. Uh, I left law many, many years ago to pursue uh, this work. So um, a lot of the work that we do with people uh, involve these issues around attraction and retention, some of the issues I saw there in chat as well. So um, I, I'm honored to be a facilitator here for the HR group. And uh, my process is one where we, uh, there's, there's a bit of a check-in, we dive into which are your topics and issues. Uh, we do a question-based inquiry to get under that issue, get to the real issue, and then we do some brainstorming of solutions. So there's a process that we follow. 
but it's woven in with a lot of um, uh, humanity and um, getting to know one another as we move forward. So I like Aaron, uh, I, love, I love your approach, Aaron is same, and I'm really here to answer questions that you might have about what we are doing in the peer groups. And I wanna bring in Michelle to speak to um, what we've already been doing. Uh, we've already started one of the groups and it was the C-suite group and it's been taking place. I took the first initial meeting was at um, Trini's uh, uh, Ripple Effect Studio. So um, if, if you could share some of the learnings from that experience and how we're trying to replicate uh, that kind of group in other functions as well. Oh, sure. So we actually had our first meeting at the conference. Um, we brought together some C-suite leaders there just to explore very much as, as we are today, but to do some um, exploring about whether this was something that people needed and wanted in the in kind of the C-suite leadership role. Um, we had been hearing from people that especially, you know, when you're a CEO, it's kind of a very lonely place to be when you're trying to make very big changes. And um, so we started off just exploring the ideas and a lot of um, what came out in that very first discussion were issues that you are hearing us talk about all the time in terms of the, the webinars and the talks that we do. It's a lot of, um, you know, work about, you know, issues, you know, the, the challenges with diversity and people accepting it and, you um, and also just how we engage people more deeply in all this work at all levels, like trying to get people excited about some of the new things that we're doing. So um, these peer impact groups are, I think, going to be really tied tightly. That you know, there are people of the same companies um, invo involved in both levels, and so I think it's going to be really exciting to see how these might inform each other um, and and work forward. But um, so Scott is Scott Segrin, um, Trini's husband, is is leading that. He has uh, very um, deep experience uh, running these in Chicago. And so it's been a wonderful resource for us to have him leading these. And um, this group decided to go from a two-hour meeting um, quarterly to a five-hour meeting quarterly. They were so excited about spending more time and diving deeper into issues. So um, not that I'm... I'm planting that in your mind, but just to say, I think that there's so much value in bringing these groups together. And so I'm really excited for all of you, you know, if you do go forward with this. Thank you. Uh, I wanna go over some of the uh, logistics of this and the um, kind of the ground rules so that you can um, get more of a sense of what we're talking about here. Um, what we plan so far is to have quarterly meetings for the group, um, and the peer impact network is designed by job function to have similar challenges, similar issues that are discussed. Um, we do plan to implement the Chatham House rules, which are traditionally, this is the rule that's applied to all peer impact networks. Participants are free to use the information received but neither the identity or the affiliation of the speaker uh, nor that of any other participant may be revealed. So it's a little bit of confidentiality, but you still get the benefit of using the information uh, um, that you receive without uh, sharing or putting anyone um, at risk or exposing the challenges that any company is having just to create that safe environment where you can really share your challenges, really speak to them, and be able to um, discuss them uh, in depth. Uh, the group will be the decision maker here. So all the facilitate facilitators when designing these groups decided that the group will decide when to meet, the group will decide if the meeting will be virtual or in-person for each quarter. The group will decide when to allow new participants to join. We plan to limit the size between eight and 18 thinking of attrition, but we think it has to be a minimum of eight for um, good um, interaction between participants. And we think above 18 is going to be too much to allow everyone time to speak. Uh, we do ask for active participation. 
So if there is a meeting that you have to miss uh, one out of the four meetings, that's fine. But this is also in the hands of the group. They decide um, how many meetings are required to attend. Um, that's because we really want you to be present and engaged for others um, and to get the maximum benefit out of this. Uh, we do have a subscription fee. And once you sign up, uh, unfortunately, it's non-refundable. Uh, we do ask for mutual respect, uh, good, powerful communication. Um, so to contribute, not just be a listener um, in the event. And we have to emphasize no selling. Uh, and we will do our best to make sure that that rule is followed during curation as well. Um, this is a group that is there to discuss their own jobs and functions, and they're directly involved in these uh, challenges. So it's not really meant for uh, consulting or uh, promoting your own business or your own um, um, services. It is really meant for cross-learning. We hope um, if the group decides to, to have a Slack channel, connect people together um, so that in between these meetings, if a challenge pops up or you need access to a certain resource or um, you do need that carbon footprinting uh, consultant and you could go to this group, you know them, uh, you've talked to them before, they understand uh, your journey and you ask for um, help in recommending someone or you ask for um, a recommendation to address one of your problems. Um, so the next steps, um, the group has a membership fee. Um, you have to be a member of NHBSR to join. Uh, the annual membership fee per participant is $600. That covers facilitation fees, meeting fees, and the facilitators insisted that breaking bread is a big part of this. So it will cover either lunch or breakfast, depending on when we meet or um, afternoon uh, uh, snack or uh, light dinner. So the and the comment was that it is during that breaking bread that people really uh, connect. So um, that will be covered in the participation fee as well. Uh, we do limit it to a maximum of two representatives from one organization. If you have a large organization and you feel like you need two members um, in the HR group or two members because you might miss uh, some of the meetings, uh, two members in the sustainability group were open to having two from each organization. Um, uh, Debbie will put the link to filling out the application. The application is uh, just that. There's no payment now. It's an expression of interest because we have to consider the organization size, your role, how the groups fit, and we curate them to have leaders or directly involved participants in the function um, when we form the groups. After uh, the groups are formed, you'll be informed of the uh, first meeting, asked to then pay the participation fee, and um, you'll have a choice of a few dates for the first meeting. Um, and we do ask during the application process of your preference, um, day preference and time meeting preference. Initially, we set it out to meet for three hours because we think that's how long it takes uh, for people to get uh, in-depth conversations. Um, so it could be nine to 12 on a Friday. It could be um, one to four on a Thursday. We did ask your preferences for day and time uh, to rank them in the application, and we'll see what the majority decides. Um, in 2024, the first quarter, we're launching the Human Resources Group and the Environmental Sustainability Group. We hope that the next group coming would be the Marketing and Community Engagement. That's the next big one that we have um, interest from. So um, this is just the start, and uh, based on the success of these groups, we will go on and um, initiate um, more groups as they come. I want to stop for a second and take any questions, if you have any. I know it's a, a lot of information, and we've been going fast, but um, if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute and ask, or you can ask in uh, the chat as well.
Is that uh, the doc that Debbie put in the chat? Is that information available on your main uh, website or is that only contained there in that Google doc? Some of it is on the website already. Yes, it should be. And uh, Debbie can probably find the link in the website. I think it's just nhbsr.org uh, slash PIN. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to be able to share the the content that you guys are, are talking about. So, yeah, thank you. You can also share, Molly, you can share the um, uh, recording. I'm going to send it to anybody who registered. And you can share the doc as well. It's available um, to anyone if you want to share it as well. I'll share the link to the document and the recording to everybody registered after this. Okay, so we thought we'd put you into two groups um, right now with your facilitators, respective facilitators, and uh, we're going to create two breakout rooms um, one is going to be for um, HR and one room one will be for HR. Room two will be for environmental sustainability. Um, and we want you to just go in, meet others who are interested in this topic. Um, I know that we have a lot more interest than we're able to attend um, live, but um, if you want to know more about the companies that are interested, once we form the groups, we will let you know which companies signed up with you as well. Um, so in the breakout room, we ask that you just introduce yourself, your organization, what is the biggest challenge you're facing right now and what specific strategies or mechanisms um, you believe crucial in addressing these obstacles collectively. Uh, we'll put the questions in chat um, I want you to know that while we introduce the first few uh, facilitations, um, just trying to um, get to know each other and understand the topics and share learnings, we're also open to um, sourcing experts or people that you want to be connected to on certain topics as fire starters, which is being done now in the C-suite. Um, we will uh, get people to talk to you in um, the initial part of the meeting um, if you request it. So we'll go out, find the experts, and manage to uh, bring them to your next meeting if uh, that's of interest. Again, the group guides uh, how you want to use your time in those meetings. And I'm opening the rooms. Room one, again, is um, the HR, and room two, it would be the... Um, sustainability.